Uh, we're back with a Bong Joon-ho power hour. Uh, no, this is part two of our Bong Joon-ho series on Nothing Notable. Uh, next, we're reviewing Mother, which is a 2009 movie directed by Bong Joon-ho. Uh, and uh, let's let's just get into it, boys. Overall thoughts. Jack. I thought it was pretty solid. Yeah, I was a fan. I thought, um, uh, I forget her name, but I thought the actress who played the mother was phenomenal. Oscar-worthy performance from her. Um, very beautiful. I love the uh, opening scene of her dancing. Hell Wonderful yeah. stuff. Yeah, pretty good overall. I thought it, st- it started a little bit slow for me, but, you know, overall, solid stuff. Solid stuff. Yeah, I think we're going to spend longer on that opening dance sequence than the actual movie yeah. does because it's so <laughs> awesome and I could talk about it forever. But um, generally, um, I really like this movie. It really started to grow on me as the movie progressed, which is kind of what you want with a murder mystery thriller crime movie. That's not to say I don't like the beginning, but it definitely it does. It starts a little bit slower, a m- bit more patient. Um, and that's something that I really appreciate about this movie is how patient it is, how still it is. For the most part, things are kind of static and slow moving, and that emphasizes the the more intense moments that start getting more snappy and more quick. Uh, so it's it's one of those movies where like it's so well told and it's so well crafted and it's just so well organized and it's so tight and so clean that you can't not love this movie. And I think I'll talk myself into liking it even more over the course of this podcast. <laughs> like I said in our host review, this has seeds of Parasite, which is like, I think, Bong Joon-ho's masterpiece. I mean, we, we still have to see a, a few of his films, but at, from what I've seen so far, like Parasite is definitely his masterpiece. But this really like brings in the family dynamic that is really great in Parasite. And uh, like you said, I, I think I just... If someone's dancing <laughs> as your opening <laughs> scene, it, it it sold me already. Like that, I think that is the best way you can open um, a movie, and especially when like you realize why she's dancing in that moment, it makes a rewatch of it even better. Because uh, after about an hour of watching it, I rewatched the opening scene, and I just absolutely loved it even more than i did and and as we talk about it like daniel said like i'm i i definitely am very hyped on this movie and the more i think about it the more i really do love it but overall i really appreciate this movie and i think bong joon ho uh, organizes it so well and again it, it does what a mystery should do which is it surprises you at the end uh and i i think that's all it really needs to do um but overall a fantastic film um I think all the performances are also great. Uh, no Song Kang Ho, though. No Song so, Kang Ho. A tragedy, really. So let's talk about that for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Song. What's not in the movie? Um, I think, yeah, I, you know, this is definitely going to be a spoiler review because you can't talk about a, a movie like this without talking about the reveal. It is on Hulu, though, so it is super accessible to yeah. watch. Um, if you do have a Hulu account, if you don't, comment below and we'll give you ours. <laughs> I'm kidding. Shout out the to... feds are going to get you now. Yeah, <laughs> It's a joke. It's a joke. Oh, yeah. That's oh, what shit. they all say. <laughs> yeah. The, the point about the surprise, like what Bong Joon-ho does to the audience is it's almost unforgivable. Like I hated him for a, about like <laughs> 15 minutes. I was like, no, you didn't just do this to us, did you? Because spoiler alert. The kid did it. <laughs> yeah, it was him the all along. The kid did it. Which, you know, it that's happened before. There's not, you know, you can't reinvent the wheel more than a couple of times, I think. But <laughs> I think that's the analogy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Agatha Christie did the biggest fucking twist in a mystery you can ever do, and no one can ever top that. And it's like a cliche to say it, but like in Agatha Christie's uh, Murder on the Orient Express, Everyone did it like that. Oh, spoilers for that. Now I got to put but that like, in the title did it. And a thumbnail. Like, spoilers for yeah. this movie. And There's for- also a murder on the <laughs> Orient Express spoiler review. <laughs> but like the thing is, like you can't ever top that. Um, and I don't. I, I think this does an interesting. What like has an interesting way of like kind of topping it in in, in some way. Yeah. By the time that it's revealed what actually happened, you're so emotionally invested in in both the mother and the son that it's impossible. It could not have been this kid and that's what makes it really believable and really good is because often i mean like you know 
Yeah, I, I, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep mentioning reviews that we've done of other movies. But like when we were watching The Little <laughs> Things, Tyler, nothing in that movie was like, whoa, like that's a surprise. Like even when, spoiler alert, <laughs> Rami Malek t- takes a shovel to Jared Leto's face. but <laughs> Which we all want to do, especially after watching the Snyder <laughs> yeah. Cut. But Go check out that review Go as check well. Out that, yeah, I'll put cards up. <laughs> yeah, but so in this movie, yeah, it's it's like so impossible because you so, you fall so deeply in love with them. And like, you know, cause, okay, so that's, I think that's what I want to talk about next is, is really the setups and the payoffs because this movie and the host and Parasite and all of Bong Joon-ho's movies that I've seen are just so good and so riddled with a bunch of small little setups that get paid off in tremendously big ways. Like right off the bat, the the whole R word thing where multiple characters call uh, uh, Do Joon the, the, the R word, the first one comes in the in the police station which is a really fun scene also mm-hmm. it's right after the golf course sequence which is just delightful um that whole fight on the golf course i love <laughs> i live for it that was so great <laughs> and that's you know another like good example of of bong jun ho doing really good class commentary in like fairly subtle ways because as soon as as soon as the kid gets hit by the car they hop in and Jin Tae is there and he's like, where are they going? And he's like, where else would a Mercedes Benz be going other than the golf yeah. club? So like there's an awareness and a level of understanding about like the 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 haves and the have nots in the community. Yeah, and then the fight is hilarious. He throws the golf club. That's another yeah. great setup because then it creates right. this thing like, oh, it's Jin Tae. He's the one that actually killed the the, the young girl. Mina. Yeah, and, and there's just like a million setups that we'll talk about as we go through other scenes. But like he just knows how to like really pay those off in meaningful ways yeah i was just gonna say like i I feel like that is such a lost form in in just media in general like like that that's the best thing you can do in a screenplay a screenplay without setup and punches isn't really anything it's just a bunch of random scenes but like again bong joon ho is a master at that and uh and mother he certainly certainly does that and i i think the best setup is is the dance number at the beginning and then there's that punch at the end to what happens before um, and I, I just love that concept that um, you you remember the purple jacket she's wearing and just like kind of once she wears that again, you're like, oh, shit. OK, like Something's when when is this going to come back into continuity? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you good. even see like just like in uh, a smaller lens, like the um, setup and punches of his uh, just jokes and bits that he does throughout the movie. Like I'm thinking of, you know, back in the beginning when they. Uh, chase down the mercedes and they go to um kick the mirrors off yes great setup and punchline there honestly one of my favorite bits i've seen in a movie in a long <laughs> time <laughs> but then it actually plays like a bigger part in the story too of revealing that like oh this dude does not have a good memory and cannot remember anything but also does have a really good memory if he like focuses really hard and rubs his temples yeah that's a that's a great point i was going to bring that up also is like that yeah it starts as just a funny physical gag and then it becomes a huge plot point going forward for the rest of the movie and we talked about this in the host but like bong joon ho's ability to mix genres and to mix tones is just unparalleled because like that moment is so funny the whole golf course sequence is so funny even when um the mother comes back into the police station and is like handing out little bottles to everybody yeah like (laughs) just and like every time she shows up the police detective is like here she comes again and uh the the whole the beginning of the movie is like very funny actually like it's it's not so grave and sad and or serious or anything like that it's pretty funny and then all of a sudden things t- make a, a pretty dramatic turn but it's not like a jarring gut punch turn it's like i always feel like i'm in good hands with bong joon ho i feel like i'm being carried along mm. uh safely and i'm not going to be taken somewhere i'm not going to be manipulated in a <laughs> I'm not going to be manipulated in a manipulative way, but, <laughs> oh, but whoa. Um, as opposed, as opposed to, to like... a non-manipulative way, but I just, I feel like I can be comfortable just sitting and trusting Bong Joon-ho's choices um, and, yeah. and how he handles the tone and how he handles um, all of these different little setups mm-hmm. and payoffs. And the, also those setups and payoffs are in smaller moments too. Very first scene when, when he's just like playing with that dog and he's like say hi to mom across the street and she's chopping that stuff Mm -hmm. and she cuts her finger like that's a small little setup and payoff it's just like building incredible amount of tension right from the get-go which is something that bong does a lot and we'd be remiss to say if uh the the, arguably the biggest setup in the movie is crazy jp Mm -hmm. 
throughout he's like mentioned throughout the entire thing and then just like just like the the tragedy of like when you figure out who crazy jp actually is and it's very uh, again it's it, it parallels with the story we we just watched of like a, a mother and her son dealing with this and now it's just like another another boy just like in prison for like a crime he didn't commit um but it's actually a crime he didn't <laughs> yeah. commit which is <laughs> the tragic part of it all i want to talk about one small thing that just kind of put a sour taste in my mouth because otherwise i i don't really have a ton of issues with the movie and i want to talk about all the things i love but right at the top there was one thing that just put a sour taste in my mouth that i had to sort of just like i just had to trust bong and just like hold on to my seat but like the semi quasi incestual relationship between the mother and the son was like just like just slightly and off-putting enough i mean incest is off-putting entirely but like in this movie it doesn't go too far to where they're actually like fully incestual but like there's just like small little hints of it that just kind of mm-hmm. made me go like oh and and i think it, it's valuable in the movie because she does have like an unhealthy relationship with her son and so that makes you buy into what she ends up doing later but it did kind of just like put a little sour taste in my mouth and i had to just sit tight for a little bit it, it's it's a little off-putting the the innuendos and whatnot um but i think you bring up a good point of it like kind of contextualizes this relationship they have i mean like this unhealthy relationship she it's revealed at one point that like she tried to kill him and herself mm-hmm. yeah at the same time just this wildly unhealthy relationship that they have together but no definitely this is a this is not a pro incest podcast <laughs> Yeah, just so we're all clear here, no one likes incest here. But yeah, I, I think it it speaks just to um, how just com- complex the mother character actually is. Like at the beginning of the film, you just think she's just like an overbearing mother, but then as you realize, like she she did try to kill them and like all this stuff, and she has a lot of demons of her own um, that she hasn't worked out yet, and. Again, it makes it endearing, but you don't you don't like them that much just because like they are just kind of like a fucked up family. And um, yeah, it is sort of understandable to a point as well. The the way that she feels about her son, because he definitely does have some sort of learning disabilities. He's not entirely um, able to function like everyone else is in, in typical society. So that's also why every time someone calls him the r word he gets so upset is because like you know he has he has some of these learning deficiencies um and so you can see that like she is like really nervous and worried about him all the time because he doesn't fit in with everyone else and so that's another like there's just a a million like little moments of buy-in where you can just buy into the characters just small little moments that just Mm -hmm. are relatable as hell or or endearing or kind or sweet i can imagine how stressful that might be for a mother who is so overbearing like that to to not be able to have control over someone that you love so deeply i wouldn't say fair reason to be like overbearing obviously but like to be you know concerned about their well-being for sure i I think a character that's really interesting and kind of speaks to like the the mother the mother's character in general is like the biggest red herring in the entire film which is jintai um which is his friend um, and, and I feel like at the beginning he is like a, a good ish friend, but like, again, he, he throws him under the bus and there, there's a bunch of stuff there that you're like, Oh, I don't know about Jintai. And it, and it perfectly like encapsulates this like red herring idea of like him just like maybe being the killer and then halfway through revealing not. And then it makes him like even more likable because he's like, I know your son didn't do it. Like we all know that he isn't capable of that. And and then he has like this whole monologue about like how he's like, uh, again, in a lesser movie, this is like the big part of the movie where he's like, like you need to know like what this murder was about because like she was like sleeping with a bunch of people. And it's like, what is it? It's like, it's, it's a murder of like love, passion, or like something else. He, he, he like says three things that are kind of like, wow, this is kind of cliched and funny. And it's like Bong Joon-ho doesn't go down that path eventually with Jintai. But um, 
it's an interesting character and i i actually like like him a lot at the end especially when he's like beating the shit out of those <laughs> oh, two yeah. small oh, boys yeah. who like don't deserve it at all like but it, it that's a great sequence too yeah i love the decision to turn your first suspect into your biggest ally like that's awesome because yeah as yeah. i was convinced completely <laughs> that he was actually the murderer i thought oh this is going to be like one of those kind of murder <laughs> mysteries where like it's just obvious from the get-go and then we just have to prove yeah. that it was this person the we whole just gotta time. catch him in the act yeah um oh but the mother did catch him in the act <laughs> Ooh, that was a weird that scene was awesome <laughs> escaping the house with the golf club wonderful so incredible again the water just, yeah. spilling out and going towards his fingy Ooh, he definitely peed his pants oh, for sure. i just want to say i'd love to see that scene afterwards also where because that's why he goes outside to go get his clothes off the off the net it's because he just pissed himself and yeah. pissed the bed um <laughs> exactly no but that scene is speaks to another um talent of bong joon ho's which is the ability to create images that make you actually viscerally feel things there's that incredibly tight shot of his finger as the water is slowly pooling up and then you can see it his finger just twitch a little bit i swear to god i thought and his eyes yeah move. i thought my hand was i thought there was water on my hand when i saw that because it's just so visceral and that's just something that bong joon ho does in every single scene of this movie incredible shot choices small little things that make you feel the movement and the motion of what's happening and that scene my god it's so tense and it's so awkward and i think it works in almost every movie when a character gets trapped in a closet and <laughs> something happens in the room it especially worked in r kelly's movie trapped in the closet big time yeah this is not no spoilers this no. is not a pro r kelly podcast no 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 look i ran into r kelly at a mcdonald's once i can say definitively not pro r kelly <laughs> but we are pro trapped in the drive through which is a weird owl parody we're also pro tangent <laughs> <laughs> today on today's podcast <laughs> definitely um also just just briefly kind of on shot composition i love when bong joon ho does he and he does this in parasite but he has like this like mystical quality to like retelling of stories i love yes. his flashback sequences mm -hmm. um and this happens like on the ferris wheel when uh gentai's interrogating the two small baby boys <laughs> um but when when one of the baby boys <laughs> <laughs> is recalling what like uh what what mina i'm, I'm pretty sure her name is um was telling uh, him one night and it, the camera just pans from him down to her in his lap and that's something like bong joon ho does really well he does it with a birthday cake in parasite when the mother's retelling a story and it, i i think it's certainly like just just a a, a great bong joon ho way of showing a flashback and i i i can imagine it really being um kind of a film technique going forward as as more people analyze bong joon ho's work and like as he like passes on and like fucking his stuff is like studied for years and years um and there's like probably going to be like a university course on bong joon ho films um but it, but it's it's something i noticed and it's it's really nice and like again you're not confused at all you're like oh this is clearly like a flashback it's it's a nice way to present that in, in a new unique way you're always in safe hands with bong that's exactly right you you never are confused by it and that's that's so tough is to to be able to hold the audiences like you know, he he has a respect for the audience's intelligence i think that's that's kind of a big part of it he knows that you're not going to be like wait a second how did she get in the, <laughs> in the ferris wheel wait <laughs> But yeah, I, I think, um, and it, that's in the host as well. They have that scene where they're all eating, and then and then the kid is there, right? And and they yeah. all just start feeding her. Um, yeah, that's that's. I was going to mention that as well because that is one of my favorite moments in the movie. It also it it implies that this death has great emotional impact on that kid that's being interrogated. She's always with him in some way. Like he he can feel her presence. It's kind of mm -hmm. ghostly. I, I kind of want to see more ghost movies like that, you know, where like it's not like spooky ghost monster. It's more like, oh, I'm haunted by something that's happened and I can always see them. They're always there. I love that. I love the idea of like being haunted yeah. by somebody and never being able to not see them. I do want to go back to that interrogation scene, though. This is not a totally original thought. It was something I thought in the moment, but then I saw a letterbox review that also said the same thing. So I'm not alone here. When people get hit in the head in Bong Joon-ho movies like it, 
you feel that like mm-hmm. it, <laughs> that stuff slaps you know <laughs> when that kid's tooth gets blasted out i was like oh oh okay that's that's violent that's very 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 violent and that's, that's gonna also leave a mark no but that speaks to my point earlier about how like the movie's very patient when you have patience as a filmmaker and as a movie it allows for moments like this to have greater impact. The whole movie, you're just sort of sitting and waiting, and it's a pretty methodical, well-told story. And then there's these little bursts of violence that are just so much more impactful because of the time that you spent just sitting and waiting. You know, there's moments in Marvel movies where, like, a whole city will be lifted up and then drop <laughs> down, and, like, millions of people will die, but you don't have any, you don't think about it whatsoever. <laughs> but in this movie, yeah. someone loses a tooth, and you're like, oh, Oh no! Yikes! Yeah, I and I'm thinking like, holy shit, he's gonna have to get that replaced and like this and that. Like, yeah. it's so realistic. But if someone loses an arm in a Marvel movie, you're like, oh, oh he'll get like a mechanical one. Yeah. <laughs> but but again, I I think I, I talked about this earlier, but it definitely makes you like Gentai a lot, and like it's like he he's really helping because he he believes his friend didn't do it, and he um, got which, paid you know, handsomely, very handsome. He got a lot yes, of money. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end when he has like a nice ass car, his friend's like, "Hey, where'd you get this car?" And he's like, "Let's just say I just got a lot of money recently," <laughs> which is not from wrong. someone. I, I'd like to think. Then, I'd uh, like to think that the first thing he did after buying that car was go straight to the golf course and just like with with a new set of clubs and just go like whacking balls. Yeah, <laughs> not good at golf at all, but just yeah. like you know, dig it, digging, being taking there. his time, and guys um, behind him are like, "Come on, like move it along. Hurry We're trying to get up. trying to finish." <laughs> Also, uh, there is a great moment when he picks up uh, the friend from from jail um, and they're like, <laughs> like his girlfriend at the time is just like singing happy birthday, but it's yeah. like happy getting out of jail. Like, <laughs> like, again, Bong Joon-ho like balances that out very well with like comedy and like serious. He's beats. a master of comedy. Truly. He is. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, when he won his fun fact, Dan, you can put this in. And the fun fact thing, when he won his Oscar for best director or like best picture, whatever it was, um, he won both. But like, I forgot what speech it was. He's like, I'm getting Bong Joon-ho is like, I'm getting very drunk yeah. tonight. Uh, thank you for this. And it's just so awesome. He's such a bro. He's, <laughs> such a bro. he's dope. <laughs> I'd get a beer with Bong. Bong is awesome. I love that guy. <laughs> he has an open invitation to come on the podcast. Also, my favorite letterbox review for this movie is consider this Bong Joon-ho is a god. Yeah, I saw that too. Or is God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so good. I think that's kind of, you know, I want to talk about Mother uh, for a lo- long, long, long while um, after this. But before we get there, I just wanted to say that it, I was so surprised watching the host and watching this movie because I the first movie of Bong's that I had seen was Parasite. So I was starting from a real strong oh, wow. position. Um I'm just continually surprised by how great his movies are. Like, you know, there's varying levels to which you might love Quentin Tarantino, but like almost all of his movies are like hits and critically acclaimed and almost all of them are going to stand for a long long time in history. Like as I'm watching Bong Joon-ho's movies, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, this might not be quite as good as Parasite, but it's damn good. It's a, it's like a classic movie. Pretty much all of his movies. I think like he has kind of an almost unimpeachable IMDb. Like all of his movies are just, just stunners. And so as as we continue to watch these movies, I'm just constantly surprised. Like, how is this guy not more talked about? Because he is. He's just flat out 100% full stop. One of the best directors on the planet. Top five. <laughs> eight five four three or two um. <laughs> yeah i mean i yeah w- briefly on on bong jun ho i i think my first film was snowpiercer and uh, just finally getting into his early work is like really interesting to see but i i mean i i think people see this because after and and we'll talk about this later but like we're gonna do snowpiercer next i, I think. yeah i was thinking that yeah. I, I have a whole 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 thing in my head of, of where we're going with Bong Joon-ho now but um like I was saying like while the mainstream public doesn't really still doesn't really know who Bong Joon-ho is uh people might more or less like most people saw Parasite but but before this like no one really knew who Bong Joon-ho was but like after this movie after Mother he directs like an American film like Snowpiercer is his next film and I think that speaks to how important the host mother memories of murder even barking dogs never bite 
which we will will watch all of these but it's just interesting to see his trajectory because after like this was his last like smaller thing because well this was probably like expensive but this was his last smaller thing like from here he makes snowpiercer okja and parasite which all had like massive releases and stuff so um uh, again it's interesting to see his trajectory and uh i again i i i love all his movies and he's it's comparatively to quentin tarantino also just real fast like i feel like tarantino makes tarantino movies um bong joon ho just makes really great movies and they have like a lot of similar motifs this and that but like i feel like they're they're very different movies and i appreciate that uh, about bong joon ho yeah i certainly agree and i think one of the things that he's most interested in which segues perfectly um to talking about the mother is his interest in like family dynamics and and the relationship between a parent and a, and a child and so i want to talk about the mother character and the performance as well because you know i think that's one of the most maybe it's it's one of the most um well understood parts of being a director is getting good performances uh but it is sort of an underrated quality because i think there's a lot of filmmakers you know they 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 just can't elevate a performance they they can get really great actors to be in their movie but they can't elevate it and i think all of bong joon ho's movies he elevates the performance of his lead actors and uh and i think in this movie particularly everybody delivers an incredible performance but kim hai ja is just so good I, I leave the host and I leave Parasite thinking Song Kang Ho is the best actor on, on the planet. And I leave this movie thinking like, damn, okay, Kim Hai Ja. Like, I've got a I've got a great top 10 right now going of, of <laughs> South Korean actors. She's so good in this movie. She's very, she embodies incredibly motherly qualities. She embodies that sort of overbearingness as well. She embodies the, 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 the nerves of having a child with learning disabilities and when things start to make a turn and she starts to do things that are uh, questionable morally, she sells it. She sells the hell out of it. And she can dance too. So, you know, I think she's just awesome. So I'm curious what you guys thought about her performance. She hits all the notes in this performance. Um, She's able to, you know, kind of have like the, like the dancing's kind of goofy and (laughs) like kind of just draws you in. But she also has like these, uh, intense like visceral emotional reactions i'm thinking specifically of when um her son reveals that he remembers that she tried to kill him and her like just heart-wrenching scream afterwards just all in all terrific very like yeah all the notes were hitting this one loved it she just says so much with just like a singular look like even like a a distressing like i feel like she kind of has a distressing look on her face the entire time because obviously she's distressed and and i i think that really hits also when when they think they found the killer and that sequence is just sorry this is this is this sequence is just so cool of like her just like realizing that she saw him earlier in the film mm-hmm. and you also realizing it and you're like ah oh, yes no no scene like every scene matters yeah. in in this film which is every great. scene has a payoff um, yeah and and the dancing sequence is just so good my favorite part i've been doing it <laughs> on the zoom call the whole time but my favorite part of it is when she smiles and she covers her mm-hmm. eyes with her her um hand and then like she like brings it down and then she's like sad and it's like oh my god this is like like oh god like this is what joker wanted to be so bad (laughs) and it's just so refreshing to just see it done better 10 years before um and just like this idea of like you're like like after you kill someone after you do this crazy thing like you're like kind of like insane and you're like very happy at some points and then you you like come down and you're like fuck this is like crazy and it's like just this emotional roller coaster that just she puts you in in the opening sequence is incredible and it's crazy that she wasn't nominated for an oscar for this because this is for 2009 especially this is one of the best performances uh, i i've seen in the last decade like it's so good um i'm gonna look up the 2010 oscar nom- nominations and uh, see see who, who beat her out while you're looking that up i just want to say a quick thing on the oscars i don't think that this kind of performance will ever be missed again because obviously before parasite won best picture and all of the other awards it won we did not 
value South Korean cinema so much. But now, even this year, Minari, which is not a South Korean film, it's an American film, but obviously with Korean characters and it's Korean language for the majority of the film. Um, the the actress who plays the the grandmother was nominated. So I don't think we're going to be missing these kinds of performances in the future because now there's a bigger spotlight thanks to Bong Joon-ho. Um, okay, so this is just my fun. The 82nd Academy Awards, uh, this was the 2010 Academy Awards, but for 2009 films, hosted by Alec Baldwin and Steve Martin. <laughs> Catherine Bigelow did win Best Director, cool. I'm pretty sure. For um, Locker, so that yeah. was big, but... Best Actress uh, nominees that year: Helen Mirren, uh, Carrie Mulligan, Gabor Gabor Sidibe, um, uh, Meryl Streep, and the winner was Sandra Bullock for The Blind Side. The Blind uh, Side so. isn't good, honestly. I saw it the other day, and I'm like, this isn't good. Deeply problematic <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah, it very much is. I mean, <laughs> Mother Mother is just so much better than The Blind Side. Yes, <laughs> we don't need to talk about The Blind Side today. But anyway. <laughs> And uh, let me double check if, uh, sorry, you can cut most of this out, but yeah, it wasn't even nominated for uh, best foreign language film. That's a tough is, one. Hmm. That's, that's a, yeah. that's a big miss. But that's just a, that's just an interesting tangent we went on, but yeah. No, I think it's, it, I think it's very interesting because yeah, the, the critical reception to these movies is so important, um, to foreign films, um, is so important because if you get a nomination for best foreign film at the Oscars, you're going to have like a blowout in the United States of like theaters offering to, to show your movie. And so now you all of a sudden have this international box office that is going to elevate your next film's budget. Um, and so, yeah, at, speaking of the trajectory of, of Bong Joon-ho, it is interesting to track, like, where is he getting traction? What, what's, how is he using that? And I think what I, what I love so much is that he never strays too far from his own sensibilities and his own interests. He's interested in class. He's interested in family. Uh, and, and those are the things that he returns to in all of his movies, no matter how big the budget might get. And so far, he has not taken on a budget that's, like, insane, you know? Snowpiercer is probably one of the bigger budgeted movies just because of the the whole set design. But even that, maybe... And also yeah. the cast. Yeah, yeah. And the cast is pretty big, Chris Evans and, and so on and so forth. And so just watching how he progresses as a filmmaker and how he doesn't compromise he he never loses sight of himself and the the things that he thinks are important because i think he's an important filmmaker and i think that he's making important movies with important messages and i think that that's that's what everyone should strive for i mean i think it's it's fine if, if like you're making judd apatow comedies because those are fun movies i enjoy those but the the deeper themes that bong joon ho is trying to get at are just so so valuable to everyone it's not just to south korean audiences but to international audiences everywhere yeah and something he does beautifully is like he he wonderfully like rips your heart out yes in like all of his films um i feel like the host ironically is his most satisfying film because spoilers for the host but they kill the big fish monster <laughs> and like no one really dies, you know, it, it's like a pretty, but like this movie, like we haven't really talked about the ending that much, but like it is just heart wrenching and it, you really bong bong puts you in the mindset of the mother. You're like, no way he did it. There's no fucking way he did it. And then at the end, when someone tells you, no, he did it. And it's the someone who like you think did it for a while, like, you, I mean, you kind of have the same gut reaction of like, no, fuck you. Like, this is not the narrative I wanted. That's like, not you're, how you're going to go. tell me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This isn't going the way you think, <laughs> as Luke Skywalker said. Um, but it, it is tragic. And like, uh, again, the, the ending is just them, you know, eating together. And it, it's, it's sweet. But it's also like he did get away with murder. Mm -hmm. And again, like how good are the scenes where characters are eating? Like that's just a staple of Bong Joon-ho cinema. But yeah, when when she shows up at the junkyard guy's place, it's it's a perfect setup for like a typical crime thriller. You sh she shows up, she's got the acupuncture, and you're like, oh, this is okay. What's gonna happen here? And then he's like pretty cool, like he's pretty nice, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. So here's actually what happened, like. I haven't told anybody, but like, yeah, I saw this kid kill this girl and um, pretty shaken up by it. <laughs> and, and she <laughs> freaks out. And like you said, Tyler, we're in her mind space. And so we think 
it's impossible. And then it leads to this junkyard man's death. And I'm, you know, this is not something that we can, we need to spend a lot of time on, but like pyrotechnics in movies are so complicated and very dangerous. And I was just in awe of watching Kim hai ja just walk around that building and light everything on fire, especially when she lights the calendar on fire, because that is like, that's not a really controllable thing that that's going to spark and that's going to like parts of it are going to ash off and, and and that could actually like be pretty dangerous. So just shout out, shouts out to the, the pyrotechnics team and the, the the fire department that was on set. And, and like, you can just see the flames just start to engulf her. And at a certain point, I'm almost thinking, oh, is she just going to, is she going to burn herself to death? Is she just going to stand there? Just stay yeah. there and let herself go? And it's just, it's uh it's just beautiful. Fire is beautiful. It's a, it's one of the most beautiful things to, to photograph and to, to put on film. And, um, yeah, that sequence is awesome. And then the whole car ride up to the place after they say like, we got your guy. Um, she's just, I think one of the things that she does so well, Tyler, you were kind of alluding to this earlier, but she plays desperation really well. She's so desperate this whole movie to prove the innocence of her son. And it's like, desperation is exhausting. And it looks like she is like putting 110% energy into everything because it's so important to her. And by putting that much energy into everything, that last scene where she gets on the bus, you can feel just like all of the energy has just been drained out of her body, especially knowing what she knows now. But then she still dances on that bus. An incredible final shot where the camera is like, where is she? Yeah. I have no idea. I just keep moving <laughs> yeah, to the right. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's, it's kind of funny because at first you're like, oh, my God, this shot, like, they're just like, oh, fuck, fuck, put, put it together real fast. But, like, I, I think it's I th it's obviously done on purpose. Like, the whole film is so organized and so well shot. And that last shot being so shaky and you not knowing where she is kind of speaks to, like, yeah, he did it. She's the only one that knows. But, like, guess what? Like, you'll never you'll never find her you'll never be able to report this to anyone and it's just kind of like yeah she's just on this bus going to who knows where yeah and it's a parent full of or it's a bus full of other parents mm -hmm. and she just blends into the crowd and it's like you'll never know yeah 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 it's a beautiful the beautiful ending and i think the last like half an hour it just becomes this like very beautiful um almost epilogue but just like portrait of a person that's just gone through so much that's usually the thing that yeah. gets skipped out in thrillers. It usually ends with a detective shooting the bad guy and then holding the, the woman who's just gone through great trauma and being like, darling, I'm going to marry you. And, <laughs> and, but in this movie, it's like, oh, Humphrey. Yeah, in this movie, it's just so sad at the end because nothing goes the way you want it to go. She murders somebody. Her son murdered somebody. An innocent person is in prison. Yeah, an innocent, person, an is innocent person is dead. dead. Yeah, burned yeah. alive. Two innocent people are dead. Yeah, and those kids also got like the crap beat out of them. They just, got big dentist bills. They, they got, got big pay. dentist bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and oh my god, and and that last sorry th th that just reminded me that last sequence when they're eating together. Yeah, and he's like, I think I figured it out. Oh. like why why crazy JP put her up there? Yes, and it's like he probably thought she was still like uh, like very injured and really bloody, so he put her at the vantage point that like the most people could see. And it's like, oh, this movie's so sad by the end of it. <laughs> um, closing thoughts, shall we say? Time for the power um, rankings. Oh yeah. Yeah, the power rankings, yeah, right. Power yeah. rankings. Okay, so we're, we're power ranking all of the Bong Joon-ho movies, but we're only including the ones that we've reviewed so far. So mm -hmm. as of the last review, The Host was our number one movie. It was in first and last place. Today, Jack, we'll start with you. Where do you rank? mother in the rankings of two you know what these are all the bong movies i've seen <laughs> i've only watched them for this podcast i am putting the host still slightly ahead of mother Ooh. Um, just on just on the factor you know what if it was by which movie is better mother might be ahead but on which one i enjoyed more i think the host is mm. slightly ahead which, which my rankings for this series are going to be which ones I enjoyed more, not necessarily which ones are yeah. better. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's a certain rewatchability to the host because it mm -hmm. is like a, a creature totally. feature that, that definitely 
that's it's i think it's going to get very interesting as we watch more movies like where the yeah. host ends up finishing because yeah the, the question of rewatchability versus just like overall quality is uh, is certainly an, an interesting one like another another film we watched was um nomad land and that one was very good i don't know if i will ever watch it again though yeah absolutely agree yeah for sure um tyler where do you rank mother um okay out of one or two i'm gonna put <laughs> mother at one Whoa. um i do i do like this movie significantly more than the host um i think the host is great in its own right but i i love when bong joon ho makes you sad mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so that's why i'm ranking mother above and and the more i think about mother the more i absolutely love love mother um and just like i'm going like when covid's all over i'm going back in the clubs and i'm hitting this you know? <laughs> yeah, doing the dance move just I'm, like the mother yeah. i'm hitting the dance move of her <laughs> smiling with her, her yeah exactly <laughs> all of that um it's gonna be great but mother number one for me and daniel what is what is your ranking you have to have what you have to agree with one of us unfortunately unless he so. says they're tied yeah yeah what if i did Whoa. that, that would be for a second. Uh, <laughs> um I really love the host. I think it is a super rewatchable movie. I'm probably going to watch it at least once a year. I can I can imagine I'll watch it once a year, probably around like Halloween. I can I can fit that in with my regular Halloween programming because it's a fun monster movie um, but with a lot of heart. This is tough because you know how much I love Song Kang Ho, and that is a big part <laughs> of why I love the host. But listen, I got to go with my heart, and my heart says mother number one right now, and the host number two. I think uh, this movie, you know, even with the absence of Song Kang Ho, who's my favorite actor, uh, it does fit into one of my favorite genres of film, which is uh, like murder, crime thrillers. I love movies about serial killers. I love movies about um, murders. It kind of just hits a lot of the things that I love in a movie. And uh, so I'm going to I'm going to rank it number one right now in host number two. And uh, will it stay number one? Who knows? Will it be dethroned? Yeah, probably we've seen parasite <laughs> tyler but <laughs> yeah no i i know well it's gonna be really fun to do this whole thing because memories of murder is one i've been meaning to watch for a long time and who knows maybe that'll dethrone parasite that is a sophomore outing which typically for a lot of great filmmakers is their best um but yeah, um, so next we're going to be watching Snowpiercer uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, it's 2013, but I'm pretty sure it also is 2014. So it, it's that awkward in between. But I remember watching it in theaters at the Rafael in 2014. Um, it is his biggest movie at that time in his career. Uh, Chris Evans, Tilda Swinton. It certainly has like an A-list cast. Um, but yeah, uh, this has been a, a, the second of our Bong Joon-ho series. I hope you guys enjoy, like, subscribe, all that good shit. Uh, I'm Tyler. I'm Jack. And I'm Daniel. And this has been the Nothing Notable Podcast. Y'all have a great day. Woohoo!